Extra. Welcome to the Rob and Liz On Demand Extra, where we kind of give you a little bit of behind the scenes peek. Now you hear us from time to time talk about Ian and TJ, who are his radio TV producers. Well, here they are in our extra. So Liz became a grandma this week. It was incredible. My daughter went into the hospital on Monday. She gave birth to little Jacinia Rose on a Wednesday night. And I mean, life just changes like that. So I, I have not gotten to meet her yet, but I'm looking forward to, to getting over there and getting to see her. So in this Robin Liz On Demand Extra, during the week, we were getting advice. You know, the best advice that you ever received when you became like a first time parent because everybody gives their advice, right? So we're looking at some of the best advice that were given to you. Now, I'm a dad. Liz is now a mom and a grandma. Yeah. And TJ, how old is your little boy? He's two and a half right now. Two and a half. He could probably <laughs> use some of this advice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so so let's go ahead ian is going to share because he's he's married newly married a newlywed how many months now it was october right yeah we just got married in october so i'm not good with math october november december so maybe four months <laughs> four months <laughs> i still gotta even do the alphabet in my head i don't he, i don't he use his, his hands and toes <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh, there you go. by the end of the month <laughs> he, he has all the texts. Ian has the texts of the advice that people like you gave during the week so that we would have the parental advice kind of thing. So let's go ahead and just run through some of these. All right. Yeah, let's do it. So um, Hannah ended up texting us in saying, um, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. That's the advice that she got from her mom. And she said it really works. She says that kids know it and uh, they're less likely to push buttons when they know the boundaries. I am totally about that because if you say yes or no, and then you go back on that, the kids, they will keep track of it, first of all. And if you are somebody that says no, but then you give in really quickly, they're never going to learn boundaries. So I am totally down with that one. What do you get out of this, TJ? Uh, Teddy doesn't like it when I say no. <laughs> no kid does. <laughs> None of like, them do. Period. If I say no, he throws a tantrum. So I, I do my best to try to keep up with him and make sure that he does what he's supposed to do. But still, in the end, no means, <laughs> oh, let me push that button some more. Right. I took Taylor, my daughter, who's now 28, took her into like a little grocery store. She wanted a toy, you know, where they put it on the convenience aisle as you're going through. So she threw a fit because she wanted this thing. She laid down. She started kicking her legs. I laid down right next to her and started kicking my legs to kind of show her this is what you look like. <laughs> Here's the thing. We, we can, we had one child of ours. Actually, I should say two because we have four kids and, and three are out of the house. The oldest and the youngest are hard headed. And so they know how to push buttons so that your yes will become a no and your no will become a yes. And so if we say no, they know how to push so hard that all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, yes. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, oh. they, do they nag you? Is that how it works? They just keep oh, nagging and asking. Yeah, and oh. it gets to mom the most. Oh, so, yeah. I did that to my mom uh -huh. tons of times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, somehow I knew that. How did I know that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thing is, when you get older, you forgot all about it, you know? So, whew. Okay, next one, Ian. What do we have? Next advice we got is from Crystal. She ended up saying that the best parental advice she ever got was 25 years ago from her dad. And he said, this child will need to be corrected and even punished at times. Always let him know afterwards that you love him hug him and tell him that you love him. Oh, and he said that that child's gr a grown man now with an amazing, hu he's an amazing human with strong faith, huge heart. So must have worked. That's good. Cause I forget to do that sometimes. I'm like, I'm so mad at the moment. And it's like, Oh, okay. Now I got to get back in there and just say, you know what, what you did was bad, but I love you. But the thing is too, the timing of it. Cause you're just like, don't, bear down on it. at least in my family you bear down and you're just like you hunker in and you say no and then the friction happens and then the punishment is made you know the discipline has to happen but where where's the timeline i think every kid's different when it comes to when you go back in and say you know what i love you oh so much so because my youngest um he will he could 
and has tried to take that situation where you say, look, I was upset. You know, what you did made me very upset and I reacted and you go in and maybe there's an apology, but then there is, but I love you through this. And he can take that and manipulate that if you allow it to happen. I'm just telling you. So yeah, you have to figure out that timeline for each child. Yeah. And for Teddy, uh, I know that he'll get real sad when I tell him no, or I correct him or anything like that. So I make it a point, a hard point to make sure that he knows why I'm doing it. Even at two and a half, he still knows. So I make sure he knows that I still love him. I care. And that's why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. My dad used to call me over. He had a recliner always in every house, had a recliner. And after he punished me, would call me over and have this talk with me. I would kind of kneel beside the recliner and he would talk. And I mean, by the end of it, I was in tears. And I was like, I would rather you spank my hiney, like <laughs> as long as you needed mm -hmm. to, than do that because he would say, you know, I'm disappointed in what you've done. I love you. And that's why it disappoints me so much. And I'm like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next one, Ian? Next one we got is from Sarah who um, said that she's raised two boys and her mom always told her to trust her instincts. Uh, it always worked from an infant to them as an adult. So that carried on for the whole rest of her life. Yeah, instinct is a thing, especially motherly instinct, Liz. Yeah, I, I think it comes down to, for me, that resonates when my daughter or, or the boys would come home and say, so-and-so wants to invite me to spend the night this weekend. And, you know, immediately, who is this? I, you know, it's a new friend. I don't know them. I don't know their parents. Give me their phone number. And if there's any stammering and, um, well, their mom doesn't have a phone or, or whatever, some excuses that's not happening because my maternal instinct says absolutely not. I don't know these people. You're not going over there. Yeah, I can tell you firsthand that motherly instinct is no joke because I'm an only child. So I'm all my parents got. And so naturally they were very protective of me, my mother especially. Like everything I ever did in my life, my, her motherly instinct was just bam, bam. And occasionally things happen that, as we said in my family, would make the claws come out like, oh, I'm going to come protect my cub and make sure nothing happens, happens to him. So motherly instinct is no joke at all. How's your daddily instinct, TJ? Well, I haven't really had like too much time to have instincts like that. Teddy doesn't really go anywhere other than, you know, to me they care hang out yeah. <laughs> they care they care and parents yeah so like instinct wise if he's crying about something like even if he's not able to like really tell me about it quite yet i still have the instincts to know kind of what he's going through and like mm -hmm. what might be wrong with him but other than mm -hmm. that i haven't had to throw my instincts out there quite yet when they get older and they're their teenage years you start getting some instinct on what yeah. they're doing wrong, you know? Yeah. yeah. If the house gets quiet, use your instinct that something happening. <laughs> <laughs> so true. What's another advice we've got from the text? Dina, she ended up saying, uh, your children will only respect you as much as you respect them. True and that. That is advice that she got 30 years ago. And it's definitely true. Showing that respect is so, so real. Oh, my word. I don't care what age they are. And if, you, if they think that you think that they're dumb and they're not smart, that's, I mean, the respect is huge. I had to yeah. learn that the hard way. Yeah. And I think some of it comes from being intentional, too, of, you know, like even last night, my son was cooking dinner and yet he was also having a conversation with me and I could have been like, Oh, he's taking, you know, dinner off my plate. I'm going to go watch a show or read a book or whatever. But it was time that I, I had to be intentional and listen to him. It was a great way to show him respect that you are becoming a young man and what you have to say means something. And that doesn't matter if they're Teddy's age at two years old or at Luke's age at 19, it's that engagement and that mutual respect. Yeah, I have to show Teddy respect on his boundaries because like growing up, like they learned the boundaries and all that. So if I really want to go give him a hug, but he don't want that hug, like I got to respect that. And I show him that respect, be like, all right, bro. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to come near you. I'm not going to give you a hug, but I want to. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know I want to right now, but I won't, I won't do it. I let him, I let him have his own space. Here's the That's tough good. one. 
not having this in your phone when they're present or in your hand when they're present because right. if they're sitting there and they're talking to you and you're on this thing surfing whatever it is a text that comes from work i have to lay it down and not look at it and that is so tough mm. but it shows respect if you put it down and you mm -hmm. engage and you're listening even though you're listening and you're answer, answering a text i mean even my wife will go rob are you listening to me because i have the phone <laughs> in my hand Joey. you know yeah. <laughs> yeah you know you know you feel it you feel what I mean? Okay, let's yeah. let's do two more. What's one more? From Beverly, and I really like this one. Beverly, she said, um, "My mama told me that when my oldest was born, enjoy him when he's stepping on your toes, because when he grows up, he'll weigh heavy on your heart." Let me tell oh. you. Let me tell you, <laughs> the eye awakening thing for me is when my kids leave the house. When Spencer went off to college, I was crushed. I'm like, oh my word, because you go back in time, going. Man, there's a lot of things I would have done differently, you know, and, and, and the big thing for me was, did I spend enough time with my kids? Because I got three out of the house and each one of them, I was crushed when they left the house. One went off to the army, another, you know, went off into life, you know, in college and everything else. Spencer went off into his college and I'm like, oh, I was just crushed. It took me a couple of weeks to get past it. And still, every time that they leave. There's that sadness, you know, that's what happens when your kids grow up and out of the house because you, you, you start going through this whole regret thing. And so when they're with you, cherish every moment. That's, what, that's yeah. one thing that I, I continue to learn. Yeah. Were you trying to make me cry this morning or like what? <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, like when Taylor went off and did this year long mission trip. She did the world race back in 2018. And I knew that she was going to be places where I couldn't reach her. You know, she was in Ethiopia. There was a, a coup that, uh, you know, they were trying to overthrow the government and they were throwing bombs just a mile down the road from where she was. And that weighed heavy on my heart. And just like Rob said, you know, I held on to those precious moments that I had up until the point that she left. So I think that is great advice. And see, I got Teddy at home still, so I don't have anything to worry about right now, but just thinking about the future and when he does grow up and get ready to leave the house, I'm going to be crushed. Yeah. But listen, are you a gamer, right, TJ? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you game when he's present? No, I do not. I Good do for not you. do any of that. Uh, when he's around, I pay 100% attention to him. Yeah, and continue to do that. I mean, it's, it's just, it is tough. I got so, speaking of paying attention, I got someone calling me, so I've got a decline. <laughs> it's coming up <laughs> on my screen. It always uh, happens when you're in the middle of something. I know. When you're doing an extra <laughs> Robin Liz On Demand podcast, don't call. Leave us alone. <laughs> okay, one more bit of advice. What do we have? All right, last one we got is from Tina. Uh, she said, choose a life verse for your child and pray over them every day. Also, no one knows your baby like you. A wonderful blessing and lean on those around you like your family, church, and small group. They're a great resource. So have a verse for them to, uh, and pray for them every day. And mm. yeah. I've no, yeah. I haven't done that. I, and, and you know what? With three out of the house, I could still do it. They don't have oh, to yeah. be young. It's not, it's not like I missed out on doing it. They're still alive. They're still here. So I think I'll do that. And I can't pray over them as far as in person. There's still one that's in our house, and that's Eli. He's 12. So I have an opportunity to do that with him. But praying over them doesn't mean they have to be present. They can still be out of the house. So if you're a latecomer like me, now I'm going to have to grab a verse for each of my kids. Yeah, well, I used to and still do because I still have two at home, but um, pray for Taylor's future mate that, and I mean, I started this when she was a toddler, that God prepared this person, that he lived for God, that he puts her first, you know, that kind of thing. And I would say that prayer wasn't every night. I'm not going to be so bold as to say that, but it was so often that I prayed for her future mate. I've been doing it for the boys as well. Taylor's now married. And as we said, while we're kind of doing this is I became a grandma this week. So she now has that next generation that, okay, I'm going to go cry now. I can't talk anymore. <laughs> Did, did you do the life first thing though? Cause I pray over my no. kids all the yeah. time. Yeah. Cause I haven't done the life first or haven't mm -hmm. like claimed a verse for my child. Right. Like what she was saying. When Teddy was born, I started off reading to him. Like I pulled the Bible out and I would read like this was day one in the hospital, him fresh out, 
and still got all that stuff on his eyes and I was reading to him and every night we make sure we say his prayers and we make sure that he knows and has that relationship and it it's been a big thing for us just because we want him to know we want him to have that great relationship with God and to grow up to be a man of God eventually good for you good for you it reminds me of a song from Wayne Watson this is back in the 80s and it's called watercolor ponies here's a here's a few lines from it I don't really so what he's talking about here, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of bringing in the song as we're talking, is his kids growing up and the little pictures that they draw mm-hmm. called watercolor ponies and putting them up on the refrigerator. You know what I mean? Yeah. This song gets me every time I hear it. Now here, here comes the chorus of the song. But baby, what will we do? When it comes back to me and you, they look a little less like little boys every day. For the pleasure of watching the children growing is mixed with a bitter cut Mm. of knowing the watercolor pony. Will one day ride away. Oh boy. That's <laughs> okay, whatever, dude. Whoa, that's that's that a is. gorgeous song. Well, yeah. Well, it's dated. You can tell it's the 80s, but the message is just so the 80s man. Still, man. Yeah, the there, message st- stands the, the time, yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. Capture the moments when you have them because one day they're out of the house. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. Thanks for making us cry. <laughs> hey, that's on you, buddy. <laughs> Rob and Liz on demand extra. We'll be doing this every week. We'll feature it every Saturday. So thank you for subscribing to the podcast, for watching it online on Apple TV and Roku. And uh, we'll see you coming up on Monday morning with Rob see and Liz ya. in the morning. Bye bye now. Bye. See you. They're so extra.